Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and this is a top grade top up for higher tier. This lesson, rearranging equations. This topic was requested by Gigza7, Sniper King, Ollie Lennox, Oscar Cruz, Sam KID and Zara Arifa. Thanks guys. If you've got a topic you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Rearranging equations in physics is one of those topics which an awful lot of people struggle with, which is a shame because it's also probably the biggest single area where you can gain marks in your physics exams. Typically you're looking at maybe 10 to 20% of the marks regardless of exam board and that's just on being able to do this one single skill. So that's one thing which you need to learn how to do and it can potentially take your grade to being a grade higher than it would otherwise be. But the first couple of times you see it, I totally appreciate it can look intimidating. I promise you though, by the end of this video, hopefully you'll see that it's pretty easy. Now, maybe your teachers have tried to get you to learn how to do this using something like a triangle. So for the equation F equals M times A, you might use this triangle with F up at the top and M and A underneath. Personally, when I was your age, I absolutely hated all of these triangles. Using one of these triangles is fine when you're giving it, but if you have to learn all of the triangles, then that's a huge amount of information. And personally, I got completely sick of trying to learn all those triangles. Way easier to learn how to use the formulas in the form that you've given them. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. And again, I promise you, it's easy. So let's go back to f equals m times a, or I'm just going to simplify this, I'm going to write it as f equals ma. This is something which mathematicians will do quite a lot in algebra, where you see two letters written next to each other like this, that just means that they're multiplied by each other. If you do any algebra in your maths lessons, and you should be doing, you'll probably see this sort of notation. If you're going to do physics at A level, you'll also see this notation. So just to make things easier, I'm going to write it like that. And actually, you'll see as we work through these, it makes things clearer. I'm not going to use a single one of those triangles in this lesson at all, and I'm not going to ask you to learn a single one of them either. All I'm going to do is use a line. So on our equation, F equals MA, all you need to do is draw a line under everything. Okay? So a line under the F and a line under the M and the A. Now the reason for this is so that you remember how you can move things from one side of the equation to the other. You're always going to need to find one thing from this equation, which means that you're going to need to clear away everything else that's on that side of the equation. So in the case of this, if we wanted to find out A, we'd need to move that M away from the right hand side of the equation. So how does adding a line to this help you? Well, all you need to remember is that if you want to move something from one side of the equation to the other, you just move it to the other side of the line as well. So if it's on top of the line, you move it below the line. And if it's below the line, you move it on top of the line. Let me show you what I mean. So F equals M A, I want A all by itself, so I'm going to move that M from the right hand side of the equation to the left hand side of the equation, and to do that it goes from the top of the line to the bottom of the line. So F over M, or F divided by M, equals A. And that's it, that's the rearrangement totally done. An awful lot of the equations which you see will be exactly the same sort of thing as this. Let's have a look at it if we wanted to solve the same equation for M. So, Going back to F equals MA again, if I want M all by itself, I just move that A across to the other side and down below that line. This works for so many equations in physics, and it's amazing how easy it is. If you really want to understand what's going on there in terms of the maths, then really what we're doing is dividing both sides through by the thing which we want to move away from the right hand side, and then it cancels out on the right hand side, but it's still there on the left hand side. But here's the thing, you don't need to know that. You might need to for your maths GCSE, but in physics GCSE, it doesn't make a difference. All you need to remember is that to move something from one side to the other, you also need to move it to the other side of this line. And hopefully, that's a pretty simple thing to remember. I'm not going to go through every single equation because it would get pretty boring, but let's have a look at a couple more examples. So, W equals MG. You don't even need to really worry about what these letters stand for, so long as you know how to move them around. 
If I know what g is and I want to find m, then I just move that g across like this. Again, the same exact operation. Or let's say v equals ir, and let's say I want to find out what r is, then I can just move that i out of the way like this. How easy is that? Some exam boards will write their equations with words instead of symbols, but the same sort of operation applies. So let's say that we've got momentum equals mass times velocity. And we know what the momentum is, and we know what the mass is, and we want to find the velocity. So we want to get velocity all by itself. Again, we just need to draw lines underneath everything in here. And then we want to move that mass out of the way, so we just move it to the other side of the equation and the other side of the line at the same time. And you get momentum over mass, or that is momentum divided by mass, equals velocity. Really, really easy, really straightforward, and very quick to do as well. Most of the equations in GCSE physics are expressed in this form, the A equals B times C form. But some of them aren't. Let's look at probably the very first physics equation you ever used, the equation for velocity or speed, and it's worked out in exactly the same way in both cases. Velocity equals distance divided by time, or V equals D over T. Now what if we've got velocity and we've got time and we want to figure out distance? Well, as I said earlier on in this video, if you want to move something to the other side of the equation, you just move it to the other side of the line as well. So, V equals D over T. If we want to move that T over to the same side as the V, then we move it to the other side of the line like this. So instead of it going below the line, it's moving above the line. And you get V T equals D, or velocity multiplied by time equals distance. Now that's pretty easy too, right? Let's have a look at another example. I equals Q over T. Again, if I wanted to find Q, I would just move that T up to the other side of the equation and I would get IT equals Q. What if we had something a little bit more complex? What if in the same equation, I equals Q over T, we wanted to find out T? We knew what I was, that's how much current is flowing. We knew what Q was, that's how much charge has flown, and we wanted to find out T, how long it took for that charge to flow at a particular current. This is a tiny bit more complicated. The rearrangements we've seen so far, they're around a sort of B grade level. This is more the sort of A grade level, but it's only a very tiny bit more complicated. Watch how it works. So we've got I equals Q over T and we want t. Well, at the moment, t is on the bottom of that fraction. That's not doing us any good. So let's move it up to the top of the line as we've already done. So we get it equals q. Now we've still got a little bit of a problem here. t is still next to that i. It isn't on its own like we want it, but you can probably already see the next step. We can just move that i out of the way. So t equals q over i. So it's exactly the same thing as we've already done, it's just that instead of that single step, there are two steps now. So long as you remember that every time you move a term across the other side of that equal sign, you also move it across the other side of the line, you can make as many moves as you like here. But really, for most of your equations, two is going to be the max. In fact, probably for around 80 to 90% of the equations you'll see, you're only gonna to need to make that first move. Now let's take it a step further. Let's look at the second most complicated equation which you need to be able to rearrange on your GCSE. And we're really getting up to A grade here. That equation is this one. EP equals MGH. That is gravitational potential energy equals mass times the gravitational field strength times the height which you move the object. Now, different boards may represent this in slightly different ways, but it's always the same basic equation. It's always mass times gravitational field strength times height. So we've got three terms here. And let's say we wanted to get mass. We wanted to figure out what a mass was and we already knew the energy and we already knew what the height moved was and we already knew what the gravitational field strength was. So we want to get M all by itself. How are we going to do that? Well, good news, you already know how to do that. It's exactly the same technique that we've already done. We want to get rid of that G and that H. So we can move the G across to the other side of the equation exactly as we already have done. And we get that EP 
over G equals MH. We can also move the H out of the way in exactly the same way. So we get EP over GH equals M. And it's that simple again. And you could do this for any combination of these letters. I'm not going to go through every single possible combination. I think you're starting to get the idea. But that's really all there is to it. That means we've only got one more equation to get to. This is the A star one. This is the very hardest equation you might need to be able to rearrange in GCSE physics. All of the others, you're just doing the same technique every single time. And I hope you're starting to feel really confident about these. But our final equation is the equation for kinetic energy. Here it is. EK equals a half mv squared. Now at first glance, this looks a lot worse than the others. Let's say that we want to find what V is equal to. This is going to be the trickiest thing to get. If we wanted to find what M was equal to, we could just move that half out of the way and the V squared out of the way, exactly as we already have done. But let's say that we want to find V. So let's put the equation back to how it was. EK equals a half times M times V squared. Well, first, let's get rid of the things which we can already do. So we can move the half out of the way and the m out of the way. So we get ek over a half m equals v squared. You might want to put that half m in brackets at this point, just to remind yourself that you're going to need to multiply those two together first before you divide ek by them. It'll just make things easier. So ek over a half m equals v squared. So far, all we've done is use our same one method. That is, if you are moving something across the equal sign, you just move it across the other side of the line as well. That's the only rule we've used. Just here, we're going to have to take things just one tiny step further because we need to get rid of that squared. But I am confident that pretty much every single one of you already knows how to undo a square. You just take a square root. So what we're going to do, in effect, is square root both sides. And it'll cancel out on the right-hand side here. And we're left with that square root of EK over a half M equals V. Again, you might want to stick that whole term in brackets and then square root it afterwards. So if I was typing this into a calculator, I would calculate a half times M first. Then I'd do EK divided by that a half times m. Finally, I'd square root that answer. So that's going to need a little bit of thinking about what sequence you do steps in. I'm sure you've already covered all the BODMAS stuff in your maths lessons, but just try and break it down step by step. But that's really all there is to it. That is the most complicated calculation you need to be able to do in GCSE physics really not that difficult, is it? Finally, I'm aware from the comments that an awful lot of you are being taught GCSE physics by teachers who aren't physics specialists. And it can be tricky to teach quite a complex topic like algebra if you're not already a physics specialist and if you don't have that experience in delivering it. In order to help those teachers, I'm trying something new this time round. What I've done is I've prepared a lesson all about how to do this. It includes this video and it includes various examples. Uh, there's a presentation which is available for free download or it's available via Google Drive for free to the public. And there's a worksheet to go with that as well. And there's a set of teacher's notes to go with that as well. It includes tasks and activities. And so it's all pre-planned for any teachers who would like to go through how to calculate algebraic rearrangements for GCSE physics and aren't sure really where to start. If you are a teacher, then do let me know if this is useful to you, because if it is something which is useful, then it's something that I'd like to do a bit more of in future. And if you're a student and you think that your teacher could benefit from it, then you might want to politely mention it to them. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here and it'll also be in the description along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. 
If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.